Okay, so today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to do the oil change on a 2015 WRX. Uh, in my opinion, Subarus are pretty easy to do an oil change on anyhow, but the 15 WRX is especially easy. So let's get to it. Now, one of the differences between the new FA20 motor and the old EJ series motors is that the oil filter is actually on top over here, where on the EJ series, it's actually underneath the engine. Uh, this actually makes it very easy to change the oil and it's right on top and it's accessible. Um, some people might say this isn't as good of a design, but honestly, I haven't seen any issues with it and it makes oil changes super easy. Uh, your engine dipstick is actually over here and your, where you fill the oil is right here. Okay, so before you even start the job, you wanna make sure that you have all the tools you're gonna to need, all the parts, and that your oil is the right consistency. I always personally use paper towels because there's at least one or two drips that you're bound to have. Uh, I also recycle all my oil. Uh, please dispose of your oil properly. I know AutoZone takes it for free. That's where I usually go. So I always fill up this container here. Then uh, every once in a while, I'll run down to AutoZone, dump it off, and it's free and it's easy to do. So make sure you're doing that. For oil, we have uh, Penn's Oil Platinum Series. Uh, this is just what I picked up right now. Uh, in my car, once I get it back, I'm gonna use AMSOIL for sure. But uh, this Penn's Oil Platinum is pretty good. Also, you wanna make sure that you have an oil filter. I only use uh, OEM Subaru Genuine oil filters from the dealerships. Uh, they are very good and they're well worth the extra cost over some cheap fram filter that may or may not collapse. Also, you wanna make sure that you have an extra crush washer. Uh, they usually include these, so just make sure you have that. This actually is for the drain bolt on the oil pan. Uh, this should always be replaced whenever you switch your oil out. So make sure you get that too. I'm also gonna need a 14 millimeter socket for the drain bolt. And in the back of your owner's manual, if you're unsure about how much oil your car uses or what type, it's all in the back. Uh, this is in 12-2, 12-3 for this particular model. Also, I always use uh, a piece of cardboard or a blanket to lie on so it's easier to slide under the car and you don't tear up your back. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna loosen your oil cap right here so that uh, air can flow into the system and there's not a vacuum so that the oil will drain freely. Next, we're going to go under the car and we're going to loosen up the drain bolt. Okay, so I'm going to hope that this is all in frame and in focus. <laughs> but uh, we are now under the car, as you can see. I have my paper towels nearby. I have my oil catch pan right here. And I have my ratchet with 14 millimeter socket on it. Uh, I'm going to try and show you the oil drain bolt is actually right up here, if you can see that. Um, it's actually awesome that Subaru built it this way because on the old EJ series uh, you had a splash guard that you had to remove and it was a whole mess to get to. Uh, on this FA20, on the 15 WRX, it's actually accessible. You don't have to remove any skid plates or splash guards or stupid nuts or bolts or clips or anything like that. It's just uh, nice and open, easy to get to. So I'm gonna crack this drain bolt uh, and drain out all the oil. Now once you break it loose, uh, you usually can loosen it by your fingers uh, if it's not too tight. Um, so let's do that. <laughs> yeah, what did I say? Sometimes you make a mess, right? Okay, so as that's finishing up draining, I just want to say that's another good reason why it's good to put down cardboard or something like that. Uh, so that if you do have a leak or a spill or something unexpected happens like that just did, uh, it's not directly on your driveway. 
uh, it will soak into the cardboard and that will give you some time to throw down kitty litter or something like that. Uh, on my car, I actually have the Fumoto drain valve, which is actually a valve that you just open. And I love that to death because you don't have any of this nonsense with uh, trying to unloosen, trying to loosen the bolt and oil spraying everywhere. Okay, so you don't have to get every last drop of oil out, but while that's finishing up, I'm going to take the old crush washer off and you throw that away and you get your new crush washer here that came with your new filter and you install that and then uh, I always grab a paper towel and I try to wipe up as best I can around here before I put the bolt back now when you're putting this bolt in you want to do it by hand and you want to take your time to make sure you're not stripping it or that it's not going in crooked uh, you'll feel the threads catch and then you just want to snug it up with your fingers first now once you have it snugged up with your fingers uh, you want to grab your socket wrench and you're just going to snug it up and then go about a quarter of a turn now you don't want to over tighten that bolt uh, you just want to snug it up so that it's nice and tight that it won't leak but uh, if you over tighten it you risk uh, stripping out the threads or pinching the washer in a way that it will uh, prevent a leak and that's no good now after I tighten that bolt down I always make sure that I wipe everything really good so it's immediately apparent if I have any leaks Okay, so now that we drained all the oil out of the engine, we want to replace our old filter with our brand new filter. Now, before you install your new oil filter, you always want to make sure that you lubricate this gasket. I personally just use some of this old motor oil here. It's perfectly fine. Then you just screw this one on. I always snug it up a little bit, but I never go past hand tight. Okay, so now we just replaced the oil filter. The only thing left to do is uh, fill it up with oil. And I should have mentioned, a funnel is always a good idea. Now, like I said earlier, uh, this is Penn's Oil Platinum Series, uh, full synthetic, and it's of course 5W30. You wanna make sure that you're using the right viscosity for your car. Now the last thing you want to do is to check your oil dipstick and make sure that it's reading the correct levels. You probably can't see this, but it's actually uh, almost halfway, a little bit more than halfway, about three quarters of the way between both dots, so we're good to go. Now the very, very last thing you want to do before you go out and start driving around is you just want to check for leaks. So I'm going to turn the car over real quick, uh, check underneath for leaks, uh, check up top, see if the oil filter is leaking or anything like that. If there are any leaks, immediately turn the car off, but there shouldn't be any, so we should be good to go.
Okay, so that was a little bit more messy than I had anticipated, uh, but I am used to the Fumoto uh, oil valve, which is a very easy on-off operation. Um, but hey, what are you gonna do, right? Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, just let me know uh, in the comments below, and I could definitely make more like it. Uh, hopefully the next time I do an oil change, it will be a lot neater. And the next time I do an oil change, it will probably be on my STI. So stay tuned. So if you guys really like this video, please hit that like button because that lets me know that you liked it and I could put out more videos with the same type of content. Uh, if you don't like it, let me know what you didn't like about it uh, so that I could put out more content that you want to actually watch. Because if you don't like to watch it, then what's the point, right? Uh, so hopefully I'll have my car back in the next week. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Uh, I will do an oil change on that probably in the next 1500 miles or so. So once again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting that like button. Catch you guys later.